Welcome to beautiful Moody Gardens. Welcome to beautiful Galveston Island. Welcome uh, to this Chamber of Commerce event, the State of the City County Breakfast, the first time we have done this. Um, I want to thank you all for being here this morning. In particular, I want to thank the folks that are sitting up at this podium today uh, for the commitment they make for each one of us, uh, for our livelihoods, for our families, for our quality of life. The work they do oftentimes goes unsung, uh, but the efforts they make on behalf of all of us, we experience and share each and every day. Uh, and we want to thank them for their commitment, not only to Galveston Island, but Galveston County. But I think more importantly, their commitment to our future and their focus on our future. We just uh, had a bond issue for the county. Uh, all three bond measures passed. I knew facilities would be difficult because it's not very interesting. And the projects we are doing with facilities are the medical examiner's office, which most people will never see because when you go there, you're dead. Uh, secondly, the Road and Bridge building, which is just not that exciting, uh, but it was built in the 40s and it's held together with baling wire these days. And then an expansion of the League City uh, Annex up in League City on Calder Road. I knew that was going to be the closest, but it did pass 5347. The uh, drainage and transportation, probably in thanks to Harvey, uh, passed overwhelmingly 7030 or thereabouts. So we've done a lot of construction in every city, including Galveston. I forgot which roads projects. He'll talk about that. But uh, the transportation component will improve transportation and mobility in every city. Every city participated. Every city has a project they identified that would help their citizens move around their city better. And then, of course, the drainage component, because a lot of times you build a road, but you can build some drainage right there with it. So those kind of go hand in hand. Fortunately, uh, in the last year, <clears throat> the county received an upgrade of its bond rating to AAA, which helps us and when we start to issue these bonds, we'll have a lower interest rate than we would have had last year. So we will be financing this at lower interest rates than were previously expected, and we'll help uh, keep our bond costs low. I've heard from multiple people, so I'm, I'm very pleased to hear this kind of sentiment. As we, you know, they said, we, we have seen the leadership in the county, we trust the leadership, we know that you're not gonna sell us things that we don't need, and we had no problem voting for it. So that was flattering to hear. Development in the county is occurring everywhere. You can't go anywhere and not get held up by cement trucks and by delivery trucks. Uh, League City, if you can picture uh, 646, they're building out new retail there. We've got the Texas City developments. We have got just really development everywhere in the county, which is good, except that it brings people in. And this is one of the reasons we have to go back to the bond issue. We can't keep up. Our regular operating budget cannot keep up with the amount of people flowing into the county. Now this is not scientific, I want you to remember this, this is not scientific. We estimate about 15 people a day coming to Galveston County. So that's probably going to slow down a little bit because we have a shortage of housing at the moment. But once that recovers, uh, and again, that's an extrapolation based on the state numbers and then trying to make it work for the county as far as our population goes. Next, Pelican Island. I am happy to report that we will see a Pelican Island bridge before I die, I think. <laughs> I have, uh, it, it, it will be huge for the county, and I know that there are a lot of people interested. Uh, six years ago, when I started this project, the answer that I got all the time was, yeah, people have been talking about this for a long time. Now, at least I'm hearing, no one's ever got this far before. So it's encouraging, and we will keep going, and again, I will make sure that there's a, a bridge to Pelican Island, because the opportunity that that will open up for the entire region, it will benefit not just the county, the city tremendously, the county a lot, and the region a lot. It'll create a lot of well-paying jobs. It'll create a lot of economic activity in the port uh, on Pelican Island. So it's, it's vitally important that we may keep that thing moving. And then lastly, uh, almost as important as building new infrastructure on Pelican Island is protecting all of the assets that we have in the region with our coastal spine. I have been saying for six years that this concept won't go anywhere without another event. Well, guess what? We had another event. So it is a prime opportunity, which we have seized upon, for local elected officials to go to D.C., which we have done routinely for the last several weeks now, and let the legislatures know that this is an important project. It's got to be federally funded. The Gulf Coast Community Protection and Recovery District, which I chair, is the local agency. The G General Land Office is the state agency. We really have all the pieces put in place. We had a committee hearing on this three or four weeks ago. Before the committee hearing, we took a boat out uh, and toured the entire area that would really be the, the ground zero, the construction areas for the coastal spine. Let me tell you, 
four hours on a boat with a bunch of politicians, no beer, no fishing poles, is as close to waterboarding as I want to get. <laughs> but it was very educational. We were able to show them exactly what happens, how it gets built, what gets protected. They really got it. I think they got it before we went out on that four hour trip, but they certainly understood afterwards. They're 100% on board. This is a bipartisan issue. No one is opposed to it. It's only a matter of how we get it done. So uh, we have a number of things coming up toward this. Again, the, uh, educating the legislature. And our, our challenge has really been not the Texas delegation. They all understand. It's explaining to the Kentucky congressman or the Indiana congressman why he cares or she cares. And that's because if you don't mind paying $5 for gasoline, maybe you don't care. But I suspect you and your constituents do. And should the petrochemical industry in Galveston County go offline for even 24 hours, the shockwave that's going to send through the system is going to be dramatic and immediate. So they understand. And we also have some benefit from Hurricane Irma in this case in that uh, the legislatures there are sensitive to the concept. They're not as far along as we are, fortunately. But uh, we do expect to see some movement on the coastal spine system. I'm hoping within the next six months and movement being some more solidified plan and at least a hint of funding and which was on the president's list of infrastructure projects that he released two or three weeks now probably two months ago now so we're very optimistic that we will have both the development on Pelican Island and then the protection um, from the coastal spine system which by the way will probably help ease or eliminate a lot of your flood insurance rates we expect it to be that effective I do want to thank the judge for including us in the county bond issue and congratulate you and the commissioners on that. Uh, Mike Lofton's over there. He's got the sack. We'll take it. Small bills and we'll go and get on down the road. But uh, those projects will include uh, a new 23rd Street from Seawall all the way to Broadway. If you've driven it, you'll appreciate it. And it'll also include the uh, completion of Avenue S from uh, 53rd Street where the, new, where the current city project ends and take it all the way to uh, behind the spot up there about 31st Street. So great projects for the city of Galveston, great victory for you guys. We appreciate you thinking of us and including it. When Gina first asked me to talk about the state of the city, usually when we refer to that it's the state of confusion or the state of shock, uh, but we tend to not have that too much around the city anymore. Uh, we're getting better. It's more like a state of perpetual motion, uh, positive continuous motion. We've got a tremendous amount going on right now. Let me start by talking a little bit about parks because I think investing in the kids is about the most important thing we can do on the island if we're going to continue to grow our community. We've got the new ball fields uh, going strong over on 53rd and S. It's, they kind of got wrapped into the street construction that was going into it, but we'll actually be complete on those ball fields uh, in the spring of next year. Uh, we're already planning uh, with Better Parks a, uh, a gala for the opening of those parks in the spring. Uh, they're going to include three ball fields, practice fields, a rugby field, volleyball courts. There's a parking lot we put in for GISD. And uh, you'll see a trend or a theme in a lot of the projects we're doing. We're working very closely in and around our schools, again, making the investment in the kids. We had our pool open this past year. How many of you have visited the new community pool? Yeah, we closed it. Um, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's finished, it's beautiful. Uh, right now we've got it shut down uh, for the continuum. We have to do the warranty work and the punch items. We didn't want to wait for that. We wanted to get it open. We thought while it was still going to be warm, nobody figured it was going to be 85 degrees in the early part of November, but uh, we did shut it. We should be wrapping that up. And uh, kind of a tale of success, Ball High had one of their first swim meets there, uh, even though we've got it closed this past week. And from what I've heard from the parents, they were very proud to have that facility and to show it off to the other uh, kids that were participating in it, so we're glad to be able to step in and help with that. Guys, I'm not going to bore you with all the list of streets we've got going. We have, in the next year, either in engineering, design, or construction, over 100 projects. So, that being said, I'm tired. But we've got a lot going on, and that includes water, sewer, facilities, streets, and all this is available on our website. I'm not going to sit here and start listing streets for me because uh, here in Detourville, you've already got a good handle on what's going on. We appreciate the newspaper giving us that moniker. I'll actually take that complaint. Uh, when I first started at the city, all I got was complaints about the streets, and now that I'm getting complaints about detours, I'm pretty damn happy about that. A couple other highlights I just want to point out to you. We've got some corridor projects going. Uh, if you've been down 27th Street in and around the stadium, you can see part of those concepts that we've been working on. Again, another partnership with GISD. Um, we all talk about the holy grail of having middle-income families move to Galveston. 
Well, we do a pretty good job of inviting a ton of middle-income families here every Friday night in the fall to play football, and we have not been putting our best foot forward as a city. And that's one of the things we're trying to do. The other thing we're trying to do is, is that as, as Mr. Sean continues to do a fabulous job for us, and we're up over 7 million visitors a year, I've got to find a place to put them, and we've got to find a place to put their cars. So as we create more walkable corridors and we create more ways for people to move around the island, uh, these projects become more and more important. Look at 27th Street, see it as a template, and include some very things, include some things that a lot of people don't understand. It has some traffic calming measures, which are those bulb outs on the corners and things. It has bike lanes in it, uh, a lot of landscape, a lot of lighting that's not in yet, uh, but you'll see it coming together. And as you see that, there'll be versions of that in place in other corridors, like 45th Street, Harborside Drive, where we're doing a big design project right now. You'll see parts and components of it on Market Street when it gets complete. Uh, you'll see parts and components of it in what we call Phase 2 on 27th Street, which will take us from basically Kempner Park all the way to the seawall. And actually, you'll see some of this on the seawall itself. Very, very excited about that. Um, we can't do anything without partnerships, like the bond issue that we uh, are so happy the county got passed. Uh, we've, we've regained our relationship with TxDOT in a real positive manner. You'll see the landscape going in on 61st Street. Uh, best news I've heard is when I met with them is that they're planning on redoing Broadway, the entire length. Uh, not that it's in really bad shape right now, but there's a couple key things that I think everybody needs to understand as to why it's important. We're going to try to lower the grade, the center grade on Broadway. If anybody was around and out and doing what they weren't supposed to do during Harvey, you saw the water flowing across Broadway at the intersections. It's actually what it's supposed to do. It's just not supposed to be three feet high on one side before it does that. Um, we're talking about possibly lowering the center grade of Broadway by about seven or eight inches. And if you guys have been around here as long as I do, you remember we've added to the curbs on the Esplanade two or three times to meet up with the asphalt as they continue to uh, pave Broadway. We think that's going to greatly aid the drainage on the south side of Broadway. The other thing TxDOT has said that they would partner with us on is replacing all the underground cross connects to our sewer system or drainage system that run underneath Broadway. Galveston drains to the bay. That's all, that's the only, I mean, we go to the bay, we go to the bay, and it's got to cross Broadway. And most of those crossings under Broadway, if you can believe this, are wooden. And, uh, well, we all know what happened to wood after a while. So uh, they have agreed to actually replace that as part of the project as well. So we're going to be working on that, uh, about 20 crossings, I believe. So all that should be big, big pluses to, uh, to drainage. The seawall project. I grew up here in Galveston going to Catholic school, and this one falls clearly under the Our Lady of Perpetual Projects. It is uh, taking forever. It's a federal contractor that does a lot of work. They're doing quality work, but it is taking a long time. Uh, and speaking to their sub, we're hoping early 18, uh, but we're really hoping that uh, you guys are enjoying what we're putting up there, and there's more to come, especially in terms of lighting. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive response on the bollard lighting, and we're going to be expanding that uh, before we actually complete the first project. Some things you often don't hear about, but since we're here at Moody Gardens and you can look out the window, uh, check out the airport. Uh, most people don't hear about the airport. It's always been kind of a forgotten gem here on the island. Uh, we have hired outstanding leadership at the airport, a professional airport manager, and uh, we've got new ramps coming in. We've got new paving on the runways, new hangars, new fencing. We have a new uh, fixed base operator uh, getting ready to start out there. Lots of good things at the airport. Uh, I think Judge Henry will attest if it wasn't for that airport, we would have been in a world of hurt. Uh, after Harvey, and that airport served the state well. So uh, at one point, I think we were the only one operational. And I still can't get my head around the fact that people were evacuating to Galveston in a hurricane, but hey, <laughs> Kelly, we'll take visitors any way we can get them. Um, speaking of Kelly and tourism, uh, 2017, at least from the city standpoint, up until Harvey hit, was going to be one of our record years, one of the best we've had in terms of sales tax and traffic counts. Uh, our sales tax dollars prior to, prior to uh, Harvey were up about 3 3 3.5% over all previous years, and we've been multiplying that and compounding that every year. Uh, another good gauge that we started is that the uh, rubber tire trolleys that we put in place this summer, uh, as of November 1st, had over 86,000 riders. For reference, that's more than we have on island transit in total in a regular year. So uh, big credit to Rick Beverlin, another professional manager that we've hired to take on these projects. Uh, the rail trolleys are in Iowa, because that's where all rail trolleys go, is to Iowa, I assume. Uh, they're getting rehab. We're rehabbing three. Uh, the fourth one is still over in the barn. Um, if these three don't kill us on the rehab, with the, you know, over what FEMA's going to pay for, 
we will probably try to fund the fourth one and get it operational because the numbers are certainly looking like it. Uh, actually, at the last council meeting, I believe we approved our fifth uh, rubber tire trolley. Uh, we went on drive-by status uh, several times last summer because we just couldn't put more people on the trolleys, on the rubber tire trolleys. So good problems to have. Uh, and uh, those are not funded through any, any of your local tax dollars. They're funded through uh, hotel occupancy tax dollars, and they're serving the hotels very well. Getting off the projects, I've had a lot of people tell me that they're pretty happy with the way things are going in Galveston, uh, as much as you can get those comments in Galveston. Um, I've had people say that they've seen a level of improvement to the island. My answer is not ever to take credit for it, or, and I don't want them to thank me. I, you need to thank your city council. Um, Having a council that works towards a common goal is something that's uh, almost kind of new for Galveston, if you really think about it. Uh, they're really focused, uh, and they, they want what's best for the island. Uh, having a council that understands uh, and building consensus, it's a big thing. And uh, putting the citizens first. I mean, we, we, we do a good job of trying to get our tourists here. We do a good job of trying to accommodate industry and UTMB, all very important things. But you also have a council now that wants to put the residents uh, right up there with them, and I think that's a big plus for the island. Uh, and a big thanks goes to the city staff that we have. Uh, I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer, even though I did go to A&M and not Texas. Um, and, uh, but we have hired an exceptional city staff, and um, I'd put it up against any, any city in the region. And uh, that's why things are getting done. You know, I'm optimistic about Galveston. I mean, I, 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 I'm not objective, <laughs> but I try to look around at every, I look at the port. The port's not where we want it, but it's moving in the right direction. I look at the park board, not where we want it. A lot of success moving in the right direction. I look at infrastructure, Lord, we've talked infrastructure, we use that word, beat it to death for 25 years I've been doing this. Uh, you know, I first came in office, I walked across the parking lot at City Hall and somebody I didn't know would get out of their car going in to pay their water bill and they say, Mayor, can you get somebody to come patch a pothole here on my street on 33rd and R and a half? You know, now I walk across the parking lot, when y'all going to quit doing so much road construction, I can't get around town. So progress. You know, parks. Y'all been by 53rd and S lately? Huh? Remember? We, we, Joe, we, we, we painted that ballpark. It hadn't been changed in 30 years. Nothing. Coat of paint, maybe. You know? It's getting improved. We're working with Moody Foundation. Moody Gardens going to redo this airport complex. You're going to have a sports facility second to none south of Opie, going back to Stewart Road. We're working with GISD. The whole group is working to transform this, uh, this complex out here. As Brian mentioned, or I think he mentioned, um, the decisions that council makes, our first question is what's good for Galvestonians? What is best for those of us who live here all the time? If it happens to help tourism, fantastic. If it doesn't, tough. But most of the things we're doing is like this with tourism. If it's good for us, it's usually good for other people. Sports tourism, these things we're doing, they're going to be good for our kids, but they're going to be good to help promote maybe a little different twist in our, our marketing and, and uh, the type of folks and type of events we attract to Galveston. Um, it doesn't matter where, where you look, uh, some of the hidden things that you don't see um, our internal operations. Uh, folks, we're, we're, he always struggle on how to say stuff where people don't get offended. Um, but what the hell. Uh, <laughs> we're working on a bigger picture than all these little cosmetic things we talk about. We're working on a bigger picture than just new streets or improved parks or better infrastructure. More aesthetics. You drive into Galveston, it looks better. After a 20 year absence, we got the old Anders down the Esplanade in the middle of the highway again. The grass is cut. When you cross the causeway, it looks like we're proud that we live here. 
But working, we're working on a bigger picture than that. Those are cosmetic. Those are personal choices. Those come and go. The hidden things we're working about that you don't see, most of you could care less about, is how we manage our business. And I know for three and a half years, we've got a great team. I mean, I get to work with Craig and Carolyn and uh, another Aggie, Mr. Maceo. Uh, and Tara Lynn has been great. And Mike Darty and Amy Bly. Um, we're working on how do, how do we fundamentally change the way we manage our business. Folks, I promise you, if you were to start a city in the year 2018, you wouldn't look at the landscape and say, I want to structure our city government to operate like the city of Galveston. You just wouldn't do it. Now, we can't change everything overnight. The system can't handle that. And we're not going to go from where we are to what you might call best practices or 2020 uh, perspective of management. But boy, we got lots of strides we can make in a hurry if we'll just do it. And one thing I've found over 25 years in doing this, people do this for change. They like to talk about it. But they don't have the guts to take the steps it takes to make change. Brian hit the nail on the head. Hypocritical. Change what this table does as long as it doesn't impact this table. You know, walk the walk. You know, I'm a firm believer if we're doing things the best we can do it, I'm the first one to tell you. Hit the cruise control button and let's keep going. But the day that we get satisfied that we're doing it perfect or we're doing it as good as we can do it, that's the time to step off the stage. We can all do it better. And this community can do it better. You're starting to see the impact. You know, when your expectations are down there on the ground, that's what you're going to get. You start raising the bar. We can do better. We're going to make you, we're going to look at our codes and we're looking at every ordinance we have. I don't know if that's ever been done in this city. Some of those ordinances have been 60, 70, 80 years ago. And they were probably germane at the time. They ain't today. So we're looking at everything we do. And if we raise the standard, if we raise the expectation, Kelly's doing that at the park board. You hear it in all different types of words, higher value tourism, whatever. You know. But if you take any son of a gun that can drive a car and, and welcome them to the beach, you're going to get a lot of son of guns down here with t-shirts and no money. And we need part of that. But if we're going to flourish and do what we want, everything's tied together. You get folks that spend more money, more sales tax. You get people who spend the night, two or three nights instead of a day trip, you get more hot tax. You get more hot tax, you get more sales tax, your property tax goes down. It's a cycle. It, it all fits together. We've got to raise the elevation, raise the expectations. If you expect city council meetings to be a calamity and last four and five hours, you're going to get city council meetings that are calamity and last four or five hours. You put a stake in the ground and say, hey, we expect better. We don't want to be embarrassed by our elected officials. We want the business run in a, in a friendly but solid type of way. That's what you'll get. And you're starting to see the... the the role, the movement in that. Let's don't stop. You know, I'm going to be gone. These players, we're all going to, even here, I'm going to be here. You know, what happens? Personality leaves, the system falls to hell. We haven't done anything. We've made cosmetic changes. We've got to fundamentally change the way we are set up to operate. And yeah, personalities and all those little things help make the system run a little better. But if you have the fundamentals in place, Mickey Mouse can run the place for a little while. And that's success. So we're going to continue to push for change. We're going to continue to look at everything we do. I don't care what hair lifts everyone in here. We're going to do it. And when we think it's right, we're going to yell it to the highest and the loudest we can yell. We're going to fix police pensions, believe it or not and fire pensions, and other employee pensions. 
They deserve it. You can't afford what we got now. They can't afford what we have now. So we've got to work together. And I'm, you know, I, <laughs> I told Dr. Brown yesterday, and I guess the losing of my good friend Ron Plackmeyer has um, caused a little shift in my, my thinking. How many times have you heard me say we're working for incremental progress? Huh? We can't jump from here to there in one step. The public system in particular can't handle that type of change. But I'll have to tell you, I'm getting too old to worry about progress. I need instant gratification. We got to move. Time's running. And so we need your help. If you think we're on the you know, it, 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 one thing about it I've learned with elected officials, you know, sometimes it's hard to grow a backbone, you know? Sometimes it's hard to get that backbone set where you can make tough decisions. So, if you think we're on the right track, if we've got a controversial issue out there, call these council people, call your county judge, call your elected official, give them support. They're going to hear from the ones who don't support them, I promise you that. You know, I had to laugh. We was at city council the other, the other day and had a hot item on Peretta Beach, right of ways, you know. I had to laugh, man, we had a lot of people that want to talk about right of ways and whether the city ought to forego its right of ways and how we ought to deal with that. And Those aren't public beaches, by the way, they're owned by private, private entities, they're not public beaches. And I had to laugh, we had, what, 45 minutes on Peretta Beach comments? The two items on the agenda before we were releasing right away all over town, nobody said a word. Same thing, same thing. Releasing public right away for something we weren't going to use for the public uh, originally intended purpose. So, if you support what your council is doing, call them. Goes a long way. I've been in this business a long time. I used to get county commissioners say, "Man, there's a groundswell out there. There's a groundswell. You got to be careful. We're, we're heading. You know, there's a, there's a lot of." That. I said, "Well, what's a groundswell? How many people call you? Three. <laughs> a phone call makes a difference, believe me. So, uh, as we enter the holiday season, it's a great time of year. You know, don't you wish we could capture Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, mojo for 12 months a year here? Uh, enjoy it. Uh, we, those who come to Galveston, our visitors, the people, we hope uh, you see a difference. Uh, we're working on permitting. We're working on building. We're working on all these internal systems to make things work a little better. Appreciate the housing authority uh, work. Um, talk about incremental progress. How many think Cedar Terrace and the villas on the Strand are better than Magnolia Homes in Cedar, in the old Cedar, huh? Huh? It ain't perfect, but it's better, you know? So, Lots to be thankful for. A good time of year to remember that uh, Thanksgiving is here for us to be thankful for. We live in paradise. You know, it's getting better every day. When you leave here, go, when you go back to UTMB and go back to Moody National Bank, go up to the seawall and take the ride east and see, see what we get every morning around here. Wonderful. We appreciate y'all. We work for y'all. I see Miss Judy. Everybody know Judy Sponge? She's only worked, huh? I never knew Judy for a long time, but I heard my daddy talk about her because he served on the wharf board for a many a year off and on. And uh, he'd always talk about Miss Judy down at Port of Galveston. Back in the old Chuck DeVoy days even, or his Selig days. Um, she's getting ready to retire. How many years, 30 plus? She was just a kid. Uh, but Judy, we appreciate uh, uh, your, your, I mean, I know we've had a lot of good port people, and there's a lot of folks who have helped keep the port together. But I promise you, there's none that's kept the glue together for the ups and downs of the Port of Galveston uh, than Judy Espanya. So, Judy, we appreciate you very much. Anyway, amen. Life is good. He's just trying to get cookies, Judy. That's right. I, she's got my vote every time she makes them damn chocolate covered peanuts, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm proud to be your mayor. It is.
truly uh, uh, been blessed in a lot of areas of my life over the years. Uh, being the mayor of Galveston, working with your hometown to make it better is, is just, it doesn't get better than that. So I appreciate the opportunity. Look forward to working with you for uh, uh, the next year, and uh, let's make Galveston a better place. Vic? Well, um, you know, folks, we're in good hands. Uh, we've got some great leaders up here making some great things happen in the community. One more round of applause for the leadership that's sitting up here. Thank you. You know, we also have a great team that's working for us up in Austin. I see Wayne came into the room. Where are you hiding back there, Wayne? There he is. Uh, Wayne Faircloth, our state representative. Jackie King, my very good friend, representing our senator, Larry Taylor. Jackie, give her a hand. And Faye, over here, uh, the smartest man in the House of Representatives, of course, our own brain surgeon, uh, Dr. Bonin. So, representing Dr. Bonin. Thank you very much. Uh, as a point of personal privilege, I see a number of the regents from Galveston College here. And Miles, I want to congratulate you on the accomplishment of getting your baccalaureate degrees moving forward. That's going to be great for this community. Congratulations. Uh, remember the dates I mentioned to you? The 30th, uh, right here, November 30th, for the Christmas party for the chamber. Take that card on the table, sign up for it. It's a great event. And please, please, please don't miss uh, January 12th. Uh, the annual meeting for the oldest and first chamber of commerce in the state of Texas. Put that also on your calendar. Final thank you to our table sponsors today, the city of Galveston, the Galveston Park Board, Board of Trustees, and again, Kelly, your team is doing an amazing job. That report I heard the other day of your successes last year, uh, and I actually went home and told my wife, that is the best presentation by a CEO I've ever seen of an annual report. You're doing an outstanding job. Congratulations. Moody National Bank, uh, Port of Galveston, Republic Waste Services, and UTMB. Go out there and make this a great day. Thank you for being here today.